we will present an online projector deblurring technique using a convolutional neural network. In projection mapping, computer generated images are overlaid onto non planar and dynamic objects. In this case, the shallow depth of field of the projector is a problem. This is because the projected image will be degraded by the defocus blur. Conventional deblurring methods project a spatial pattern such as a dot pattern for estimating the blur kernel, or the point spread function, PSF. Then, the inverse of the PSF is convolved with the target image to obtain the edge enhanced compensation image. The compensation image alleviates the defocus blur in the projected result. However, the conventional deblurring methods require the frequent projection of a dot pattern when the screen is moved, which is not preferable in user experience. From here, we explain the motivation of our research for projector deblurring. First, we don't project calibration patterns like a dot pattern. Second, we don't use additional devices or multiple projectors. Finally, we use the power of deep neural networks. We will explain the proposed method. We propose to apply convolutional neural networks to estimate the PSF and generate the compensation image. Our defocus net estimates the spatially varying PSFs, called defocus blur map, from the projected result of the previous frame rather than that of a dot pattern. The defocus blur map represents how much each pixel of the projected image has been blurred. In addition, our luminance net estimates a luminance attenuation map that represents the degree of reduction of the captured luminance of the projected result compared to that of the target luminance due to the inverse square law of light intensity. Note that other information is also injected into these networks, so please refer to the paper for the details. The compensation net generates a compensation image from these maps and the target image of the current frame. By projecting a compensation image, defocus blur is suppressed. Throughout this process, dot pattern images are not required to be projected. We synthesized a dataset for training the network. First, we place a projector, a camera, and a projection surface in a virtual space, where the projector and the camera share the same optical axis. Then, we compute the depth image of the surface. From the depth map and the focal plane of the projector, we compute the defocus blur map, which is used to generate a blurred image. When this projected image is captured by the camera, the luminance is attenuated due to the inverse square law of light intensity. Therefore, we generate a luminance attenuation map representing the luminance reduction. Based on the luminance attenuation map, the intensity of the blurred image is attenuated. Finally, we slightly warp the generated image, considering the imperfection of the alignment of the projector and the camera in a physical setup. We will explain how to learn the defocus net and luminance net. After pseudo projecting the projection image, each network estimates the map from these images. We then calculate the loss between the estimated map and the true value map used for pseudo projection. The compensation net generates a compensation image from the target image and two maps. We then calculate the loss between the compensated pseudo-projected result and the target image whose luminance is normalized according to the pseudo-projection. We show the projection results when the movement of the projection surface is translated. We show the projection results when the movement of the projection surface is rotated. We will show the usefulness of the warping process for pseudo projection. This experiment compares the defocus blur maps output from the defocus net trained using the datasets without and with a warping process. In this example where an image is projected onto a rotating surface, the left side of the projected result gets blurred according to the rotation. 
As shown in the result, the estimated defocus blur map is less affected by the projected image contents when the dataset is generated by incorporating the warping process. One of the limitations of our project is the lack of real-time performance. The image size used in this experiment was 256 pixels in height and width and the generation time per image was 71.7 milliseconds. However, we think that in the future, high-resolution images will need to be processed in real-time and this will be our next goal. We believe that we can get closer to our next goal by referring to a network structure designed for real-time deblurring of high-resolution images in computer vision. This is the conclusion.